And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Kassarian, and welcome to an updated slash redone spotlight on Rotary Craft by Reka. See, I got the name right this time. All right. At least I hope I did, maybe. All right, so I was looking at my old spotlight, and I just ended up deciding that while it was serviceable, it was not of the best quality, and I really didn't know enough about Rotary Craft to really be, you know, taking a good look at it. Anyways... <clears throat> so that leads me to redo it. All right, so the first thing while my build craft filler back there is clearing out an area for me to do this spotlight in, the first thing you want to take a look at is your Rotary Craft handbook. All right, now you should spawn in with this on most servers and in your single player. If your configs have been changed, its crafting is pretty easy. Just some iron, redstone, and paper gives you a Rotary Craft handbook. Right click it, and you get this nice GUI. Table of contents, miscellaneous, engines, transmission, production, processing, farming, accessory, all of this stuff, all right? Don't get confused and don't get overwhelmed. We're going to be walking through this pretty easily. Okay, so here is, well, all right. So we should probably get started on the different types of power. Every machine in Rotary Craft, if I look up, say, the friction heater, is rated for a specific amount of power. You notice the friction heater needs 8.192 kilowatts. That is 8,192 watts. Kilo, 1,000, you guys get that, all right? So we need to provide it with 8,192 kilowatts. Now, watts are speed times torque. Speed is in radians per second, and torque is in newton meters. You can read more of this in the basic terms, okay? <clears throat> you can see watts, one watt equals one joule per second. Newton meters, that's important, by the way, that one joule per second. That's really important once we get over into Electrocraft. Newton meters are a unit of, tor of torque. Radians per second is speed. One radian per second equals 9.55 rotations per minute RPM. You'll probably be more familiar with RPM if you take a look at your um, mods. You notice this flashing red thing here, config settings have been changed. Um, this is just something because this is the same instance as my Let's Play. Machines can be crafted in tables other than work tables. Uh, that's been changed. And HSL has been usable in other mods recipes. Don't worry about that. We'll be playing. We'll be working with this as if this setting, the machines other than work table, as if that is false. Okay? So don't worry about that and ignore the flashing red thing that will happen over there. Awesome. Okay, so now that we've gone through that, let's take a look at how we generate some other stuff in the table of contents. The first thing you're going to need to do in Rotary Craft is to get yourself a blast furnace, all right? Crafted just with some stone bricks and some redstone. Not too difficult, all right? So we place this down, we open it up, and this is quite the interface, isn't it? So basically how this works is we need gunpowder. Gunpowder. We need coal. And we need sand. Okay. And then we need some iron to cook because we're going to make some steel. Now, when you do this, you really want to fill up this entire blast furnace here. Okay. So we'll just fill this guy up. Not too difficult, right? Just get them all filled. And nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? Because the coal isn't a fuel. The coal is a reagent. Notice how it says 30 degrees C over on the side there. We need to heat this guy up. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a bucket of lava. Because what in Minecraft is hotter than lava? Not much. So we'll get ourselves some lava. Plant that there. And if you notice, this guy is starting to heat up. We're now up to 44 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now if you look in the Rotary Craft Handbook... Da, 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 da. Actually, hold on for a minute. It should be... There we go. Resources. Steel. Steel ingots. Smelting and iron ingots. Ingot and blaster pulse jet furnace is the basis for all machines. Yep. Pretty much. Notice <clears throat> it's not telling you how hot it has to be. Um, if we look at production blast furnace. 600 degrees Celsius. All right. That's not shabby. You notice it's slowly starting to heat up. All right. It's going to take it a little bit of time to get there, but we shouldn't have to really worry about it, okay? Now, you want to be careful because this thing can overheat. Get it up past 2K, 2,000 degrees Celsius, excuse me. 2K would be something completely different. And this thing will melt or explode. I don't remember which. Let's not get it there, all right? 
So that guy's still going. Good. Okay. <clears throat> so now that we have some steel cooking up, or at least starting to heat up to the point where it's cooked up, let's talk about power generation, or at least how you're going to do it, or other, rather, other machines that you need. The first thing you're going to want to get, or third thing, really, is the work table. It's a bit of HSLA that we're about to get from that blast furnace over to my right. Crafting table, some bricks, and a slab. All right, let's put down the work table, and let's take a good look at this guy. Work table, pretty cool. Three by two, A pair of three by threes. Uh, this goes over to this, by the way. So one of the things we can do, uh, if we think about it for just a minute, is let's craft something. All right, let's actually spotlight, I know, but let's actually craft something. We're going to craft ourselves a steam engine, okay? Condenser, impeller, shaft units. Oh, my gosh. All right. So basically what this does is uh, it, uh, well, let's, let me talk while I'm doing this. Rotary craft machines are very realistic. And by the way, I'm not going to be going through recipes in this because most of the time, because it's going to take far too long. All right. So all these sub items, they're all listed in NEI. I have never run across anything that isn't listed in NEI. So we don't really have to worry about that. All right, so let's get some of this stuff. Let's get ourselves a pair of base panels. And let's go there and there. And then let's get ourselves a bit of gold. Okay, and this is the basic rotary craft recipe, not the mod enabled one. So I could just pull the steam engine out like this, right? All right, so let's get some cobblestone now. Let me actually put two of these recipes together on the table. So we can get ourselves our steam engine right now. All right. And that's great. The steam engine is actually a pretty good basic power source. All right. Just it it just kind of goes, it does its thing. And it doesn't really require much maintenance, upkeep, or fuel. It does require some resources, but they're not that bad. All right. So let's also get ourselves a shaft unit. And let's put that guy right there. And let's get ourselves those pair of base panels back. One, two. And let's get ourselves some gold. You can shift click into this thing, by the way. There we go. All right, so I could just pull one out. Boom, done. I can also give this guy a redstone signal to craft. Nice. So now we have ourselves two steam engines. Power is 16,384 at kilowatts at 32 newton meters at 512 radians per second. Now, if you guys were paying attention, when I looked at, say, the friction heater, you should notice that the minimum power... <clears throat> is 8.192 well this guy generates 16 nice torque 32 torque 32 nice now notice how it says minimum torque that means that it requires a specific amount of torque to get this thing running okay so you have to give it 8.192 kilowatts but the torque has to be above 32 all right so you can for example because rotary craft you can give it power at a different setting so I could be giving it the exact same power, 8.192, but I could be giving it at 16 Newton meters of torque, but double the speed, okay? And this is an important thing to remember, especially in later on engines, all right? So speaking of engines, let's look at probably the most basic engine you'll ever craft, the DC electric engine. HSLA, shaft units, redstone, okay? Now, the DC electric engine is pretty cool. And let's also get a dynamometer for you guys while we're at it. All right. Oh, one more thing I want to show you guys is this little tool right here, which is the angular transducer. Okay. He's pretty easy to make. Just need some redstone, some HSLA. And what he lets you do is he lets you right click on any rotary craft machine and it'll tell you what's going on. All right. Temperature 440, insufficient temperature. Now, I also have Wayla, so you guys can see I have Wayla up in the top of my screen. Right, good. So you don't need to really, really worry about that, but it'll also tell you what's wrong with any machine. The other thing you're gonna wanna get is the, is the Rotary Craft screwdriver, all right? HSLA stick and a piece of wood. All right, so you wanna get those and you wanna get them up and running, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the DC electric engine. So I'm going to plop him down right here. You notice I have this red box. That tells me the power output. All right. And I'm going to stick my dynamometer on the front. The green box is his input. The dynamometer just tells me what the speed, torque, and power are. Okay. So I'm just going to throw this down. And all the DC electric engine requires is a lever. He's generating 1.024 kilowatts at 4 newton meters of torque and 256 radians per second. Nice. Okay. 
Let's take a quick look at another machine we're going to need, which is the pump. Okay. Rotary Craft has its own pump. You can see it here. Some of these liquid pipes empowers glass pane. Liquid pipes are crafted with just glass and some HSLI. So let's also get ourselves some liquid pipes while we're at it. Okay. And this will also allow me, well, all right, we'll, we'll wait on the liquid pipe shenanigans until later. All right. And we'll just need a little bit of water to go with it. Thank you. So I should probably also get myself an empty bucket, come to think of it, if I'm doing the spotlight in creative mode. Thank you very much. All right. So let's take a quick look at the pump. Oh, hey, look, I actually already have a uh, nice little place where I can build off. Awesome. All right. So let's just build off a little platform here. And we'll just stick our friend the pump right in the middle of it. You can see he can accept power from either side. All right. And we can stick our DC electric engine on. And he's facing the wrong way. Oopsies. Right. Yeah, exactly. All right. Now, if you notice, by the way, the DC electric engine produces the exact amount of power that the pump needs. Okay. So let's flip him around just by right-clicking him with the wrench, or not the wrench, but with the screwdriver, and let's give him that redstone signal he needs. And that's gonna start the pump running. You can see he's slowly starting to accumulate water. And while I'm here, because this thing, I'd rather this not run out anytime soon, let's do this. Now, like most rotary craft machines, you can actually increase the speed of this thing uh, by giving it more power than it necessarily asks for, okay? So if I was giving it more speed, it would run faster. Right. So we're just going to build our little liquid pipes off. You can see that there's pressure in those pipes. <clears throat> okay. And you want to keep your eye on that pressure level. Right? Right. Notice that the pressure here is 158. And it's going to slowly creep up over time. All right. As more and more water is pushed into it. Now, this is also the point to realize that you might want to be careful if you're building these things straight up because it's going to have a harder time. Right? Right. All right. So let's just run this guy all the way over and up. You can see the pressure isn't quite holding stable over here. So we're going to get over to here. You can see that this blast furnace is at 630. Hmm. Interesting. So he's not quite hot enough, right? Right something to watch out for. Temperature is 630. What does this thing say we need? No, wrong page, of course. Production, blast furnace. Heat the machine to 600. Hmm. Ah, right. Hold on. There we go. Just remember to get these in the right slot order, and it'll work. So now he's off and running. Okay? Okay. So let's take a look at our second engine the steam engine. Okay. Now the steam engine is pretty cool. Ah, achievement get steel maker, achievement get pumped. All right. There are some nice achievements. So the first thing we're going to need to do is the steam engine needs to be heated up. If I place it down, you'll see it has no internal way of giving it heat. A lot of stuff in Rotary Craft relies on sort of the heat mechanic API that Rika has done. Now we could throw lava underneath it, but that's a little dangerous. We don't want to overheat this machine. So instead, we're going to get ourselves some nether rack, or anything else that'll burn, and we can get ourselves a pair of just a flint and steel. Oops. There we go. Just want to make sure both of those are lit. Now, this also needs, you notice it says fuel. It doesn't mean fuel, it means it needs water to keep it running. So we just connect water like that, and that will allow these things to start filling up. Okay. Nice, right? Right. Yep, we're having an issue again. I forget that about this, that it has to be kind of flat-like. Hold on. Click, click. Click, click. Click, click. Click, click. Click, click. Nope, click. Click, 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 just so you don't run out. And uh, one there, and one there. There we go. So now these guys are starting to heat up, all right? Now, if you notice, these guys generate 16.384 kilowatts at 32 newton meters and 512 radians per second. That's not bad. 
Now, the other machine we're going to need fairly quickly is going to be a grinder, okay? You notice he needs 4.096 kilowatts, all right? This guy generates that. I think I can, I think I can. This guy generates 16, so he generates far more than this thing does, but you need 128 newton meters of torque, all right? Now, I have 32 newton meters coming out. Right now, I have 64. We can get this guy up to the place where he can, you know, power that. Now, what we could do, because I have 64, that's four. We could get ourselves a gearbox, okay? And it comes in multiple different varieties. Wood, stone, steel, diamond, bedrock. Now, each of these has a different load limit. The same with the shafts that I'll show you in a minute, all right? And I have to remember where it puts that because sometimes it can be in, an, in a kind of weird place. Table of contents, ah, shaft load limits. These are the load limits. Exceeding these can result in breakage, all right? Wood, stone, steel, diamond, bedrock is infinity. All right, for a gearbox, both the input and output speeds and torques must be considered. What this means is that say I have wood or let's say, yeah, wood. And I input at 260 newton meters, and I'm output, inputting at 3,400 3, radians per second. Now, if I go on a two to one, which halves one of these and doubles the other, it'll break because the output will be too high, okay? So just keep that in mind. You can see these guys are powering up nicely. Now, if you notice, I could, to get the grinder working, I could add two more or three more right? If I had four, because each of these generates 32 times two is 64 times another two would be 128 in torque. So if I had four, that would generate enough power to run this thing. But let's say I didn't want to do that. Let's say I just had these two. So I'm right now generating 64 newton meters of torque, okay? And let's say that I wanted to add those together, right? Right. So I want to get myself some bevel gears, and a shaft junction, okay? Shaft junction. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place down the shaft junction and it has two green sides and one red. Now I can right click this guy to line him up. So I want him to look like that, right? So he's outputting to here and he's getting his input from that other steam engine, all right? Now we're gonna take our bevel gear and drop him down there. And this is a little more complicated. So if I right click this guy, each side has a color. You can see his input is actually correct right now, okay? And what we wanna do is right click on this guy, and I actually need to make sure I have this lined up correctly, right? So if I right click, you'll notice each color, each side has a color, right? And so I'm already inputting from the right side, but I wanna switch this to south, so he's outputting correct, all right? So now if I throw down a dynamometer, click, you can see, that I'm now getting 32.768 kilowatts, which is double that, and I'm getting 64 newton meters of torque, which is double that. The speed, however, is unchanged. Why? Because speed never increases when you're merging like this, which makes sense, right? It, if you add two power sources together, the speed at which they're spinning won't increase, just the amount of torque you have available, all right? But we're still not there, right? This thing requires, let's say, let's see, where is it, where is it? This thing requires 128 Newton meters of torque. Well, that's why we have a gearbox. We can sacrifice speed to get ourselves power, okay? So let's get ourselves a gearbox. Let's get ourselves a steel gearbox and let's break this for just a second, okay? So if I get myself a steel gearbox and I need a steel two to one, I believe, all right, and we just place them down. The input is always away from you when you place it. You'll see temperature 30, damage zero, lubricant zero, because these guys need lubricant, right? Right. And this would be as good as time as any to show you guys the reservoir, okay? The reservoir crafted like this is a way for rotary craft things to hold liquid. So if I'm gonna stick this guy up here, the reservoir works in an interesting way. It'll connect to fluid pipes or really any other rotary craft pipe. But what we're gonna need for this application is a lubricant pipe, lubricant hose. And this guy outputs from the bottom. So we'll connect that and we'll connect that like that. Okay, you can see it's now connected, beautiful. 
Now let's get ourselves some lubricant just to start this guy off. Right? Right. So there we go. This guy's filling up. You can hold, you can hold 24 buckets of liquid. All right? All right. So now let's throw our dynamometer back down. And let's actually break this just so I can show you. Break that. So we'll put down our dynamometer there. And if I can get into range, we'll put down our dynamometer here. You can see we're getting... Let's do this for the side where we actually have access. The power stays the same. But because this is a 2 to 1 gearbox, we divide our speed in half. 512 goes down to 256. And we multiply our speed by 2. Okay. If I had had a different gearbox, let's say a, uh, a steel four to one, okay? We do the same conversion. We did our power would stay the same. We divide our torque by four and multiply, or rather divide our speed by four and multiply our torque by four. So instead of having a speed of 256, we wind up with a speed of 128 and we'd end up with a torque of 512. Right, right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw down the grinder, okay? You can see his operation time is 20.95 seconds, and he is receiving a good amount of power, speed, and torque. Why is his operation time 20.95 seconds? That's a good question with a good answer. Basically what's happening is, even though his torque is bent, you need more speed. The more speed you push into most rotorcraft machines, the faster they'll run. You don't need most machines to put more torque in than their minimum requirement, okay? Any more torque would be a waste. So now what we could do with this machine is, let's just delete all of this. You can see we got ourselves some HSLA. And there are ways to get bonuses on this, by the way, all right? And notice that not everything got used up each time, all right? So you don't have to, you know, it's not a one-to-one -one per cycle. So if, now if I open this up a little bit, right? And I get myself some nether rack and my thingy there. And I light this off. And just hold on for a split second, please. Much better. I can get myself some more steam engines, right? And I can connect them like this. Boom, boom. Oh. Of course I put my nether rack in the wrong place. Ah, that was funny. Okay, so now if you notice, I can put a couple more steam engines like this, okay? And they're filling up quite nicely. And what we'll do is we'll get ourselves some more shaft junctions, and we'll rotate them to work properly, okay? So you can see his output should be like that, and like that. We'll throw down a bevel gear, and we'll set his output to be black. And these guys should start running. Now, once they start running, something kind of weird's going to happen here. All right? Then it's actually worth watching that happen. Okay. Angular transducer. So he's outputting 0 watts, 0 radius per second. These guys are all running at 512. All right? But when these guys start up, they kind of have a spin-up time. Most machines in Rotorcraft do. There's kind of a spin-up time. <clears throat> And you'll be able to hear it when it happens, okay? How are you doing? Yeah, you're going to round soon. Hear that? That tink, tink, tink. Or is that the music? Hold on. Let me just turn off my music for a minute. Thank you. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. Hear that tink, 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 tink sound? That's because they didn't quite reach 512 instantaneously. If you put different speeds of power in, these things don't like it, all right? As well, if you try and put more than four engines into this at the same time, they really don't like it, okay? So if you have more than four engines going into a single shaft junction at any point in your shaft network, your shaft junction will detonate. Not massively, but it'll detonate. So now notice we have 128 newton meters of torque coming in, okay? Now this guy's still at 29.5 even though we have far more torque than we really need, all right? That's because we don't need this gearbox anymore, so let's break it. Instead, we're gonna put in a shaft unit, all right? We'll just use a steel shaft for right now. Actually, could we even use this? Yeah, we could use a stone shaft. We could not, however, use a wood shaft, all right? Notice, torque 128. 
No, we could, right? We could use a wood shaft in this. So we could use a wood shaft. Plop them down right like that. Notice there's no power loss. Nice and cheap, though. All right. But now, if we look at this, or look at Wayla, you can see it's now every 17.95 seconds. Right? Awesome. Now, the reason I wanted to show you guys this, and let's get ourselves a hopper, is because the grinder is going to be massively important. And yes, I kind of just showed you guys the beginning of a rotary craft machine setup. Okay? The grinder is monstrously important. It, because it allows you to grind canola. First person to comment on my videos about how canola isn't actually a seed, I will yell at you. Okay? We can take canola seeds and we can grind them down into guess what? Oops. Gas. Oil or lubricant. All right. So this guy's going to grind it down and we're going to get some lubricant out of this thing. Nice and easy. You can see we got not a huge amount and we got some canola seed husks. And those can be used later on to do something completely different. Now what we can do is we can then output this stuff. Let's... Then we can output this lubricant <clears throat> back into the reservoir. Okay. Nice. This way, we are now producing lubricant essentially for free with these four steam engines. We're not producing a lot, but we are producing lubricant. Okay. Awesome. We can get this operation tab up much faster if we really wanted to. All right, guys. So this is the basics of rotary craft. The very, very basics. Trust me when I say the very basics. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to actually start working on the power generation in some more unique and interesting ways. We'll kind of climb up the power generation of the different types of engines that are available. <clears throat> um, just the basic ones that I use. What The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do a series of thir full 30-minute tutorials. All right. After that, we'll start going machine by machine by machine by machine. So I'm going to show you the machines that I use a lot, that I've used in my Let's Play. So we're going to go through the gasoline engine the hydrokinetic engine, the micro turbine, the full turbine. We're going to go through machines like the friction heater and, of course, the extractor, <clears throat> which you all want to see the extractor, right? You all want to see that thing. <clears throat> and then we'll end up, once we're done with that, going through some machines one by one by one by one, probably a series of five to ten minute videos on that. All right, guys, this has been Mr. Kassarian. I hope you guys have found this helpful, and I hope to see you in future episodes of this tutorial series. Until then, guys, happy building.